Hello, my name is Stefan Lenz and I would like to present our package Julia connector to you. It is actually an R package, not a Julia package. This brings us to the first question. Why would you be interested in that if you are here at a Julia conference? Integrating Julia in R is also interesting for Julia users because it allows them to share their code easily with R users. Making the gap between Julia and R smaller also helps to establish Julia as an alternative to writing C code. R users can also benefit, of course. If an R developer wants to write some algorithm that will be too slow in R, but does not want to switch to Julia entirely, he or she can optimize only portions of the code using Julia. An R user that collaborates with Julia users can simply access their code or any other Julia code. In the following, I will use Flux as the main example for demonstrating some of the features of the Julia connector. Here you can see how easy it becomes to use functionality from Julia packages in R. For example, if you would like to create a neural network using Flux, you can do this in Julia in the following way. You call dense to create densely connected neural network layers with the given numbers of units and an activation function. These layers can then be connected with the chain function. If you would like to do the same in R, you can use the Julia connector. The Julia connector does not know about flux, but the Julia import function simply scans a specified Julia package. Everything that can act as a function in this package is translated to an R function and collected in an R environment. With this, you can call the dense and chain function now in R and also pass the ReLU activation function as an argument. Chaining function calls is possible because object references can be transferred between R and Julia. In the same way, the return value of a function call, here our neural network, can be assigned to an R variable. As you can see, this allows a quite tight integration on the syntax level. It is also possible to couple Julia and R more loosely. The Julia eval function can evaluate arbitrary Julia code that is passed as a string and return the result to R. With this, we can for example define a training function for the model by evaluating its definition in Julia. The result of this evaluation is a function that can be assigned and used as an R function. R functions can also be passed as arguments to Julia functions. This allows to call back to R from Julia. Here we see how we can specify a callback function that is executed during the training. For this we define again a training function that accepts as fourth argument another function. This callback function can be used to communicate the current training loss back to R during the training. This can be used to create a monitoring plot showing the training progress live. A complete example for this can be found in the readme of the package on GitHub. When developing a complex deep learning model, we will usually have some function to initialize the model, a training function and a way of evaluating or using the model, for example predicting some labels. It makes sense and is also more efficient to collect Julia code like this in a module. Using modules is also a nice way to keep your Julia workspace clean when working interactively because all definitions in a module are reset every time the module is imported. Loading a module is done with the include function in Julia. We can call this function in R via the Julia call function, which allows to call any Julia function by name. With that, we can load the module definition from the source file. The automatic import of the functions from the module works then as well as with the packages and we can use all functions in our module in R. Another example where Julia is useful because of its speed is the analysis of large datasets. To demonstrate the handling of tabular data, we use the package JuliaDB. In R, data of tabular structure is kept in data frames. In Julia, we have the tables package, which provides a common interface that is implemented by many other packages dealing with tabular data. This interface is also used by JuliaDB. The JuliaDB table function accepts any Julia structure that implements the tables interface to create a special index table. The Julia connector implements the tables interface for an R data frame, 
such that it can be passed to the JuliaDB table function. You can also see here that the Julia connector handles missing values and will translate NA values in R to values of type missing in Julia. With a call to S data frame, you can get a normal R data frame object from any Julia object that implements the tables interface, like the object we have created in the slide before. You have now seen the features that are highlighted here in blue in this table. This feature matrix shows the most important features of the Julia connector and compares them with two other R packages that aim at integrating Julia in R, namely Julia call and XR Julia. For the communication between Julia and R, we chose to use a custom TCP protocol. A connection via TCP can be maintained more easily across different versions of R and Julia than using a connection via the C interface as Julia call does. XR Julia also uses TCP but uses JSON as interchange format which is much less efficient because JSON is text-based. Communicating numbers via a text-based format requires the conversions to strings with their decimal representation. Our custom communication protocol uses the binary form of the objects and is optimized to create as little overhead as possible. Another advantage of using TCP is that it allows to implement features for interactive use which are not available in Julia call. Interrupting long-running calls is possible via the Julia connector in a clean way with this. This is especially important for deep learning. If you experiment with some deep learning model, for example, you may change your mind if a call takes too long and would like to interrupt it. Showing standard output and standard error output, including warnings, is also an important feature for the interactive use. Due to the lack of time, I can't go into the details of the, of the other features here. You can find more details on the features of the Julia connector and on the comparison to Julia Call and XR Julia in our article, which is available on Archive now. It also includes an example for fitting neural ordinary differential equations on time series data. If you have become interested, you might want to check out the package on GitHub, take a look at the article on Archive and of course install the package, which is available from the official CRAN repository. Thank you for the attention.